Hi guys, I am Miss Anna, an English teacher, and this is our online English lesson. Today we are going to continue to talk about books and libraries. I hope you've already had a chance to attend a library and get your own library card. Did you know that in many European countries and in the USA, libraries are a very important part of the community? People, especially students, go to the library to read books and magazines, use a computer, and, of course, to study. Many libraries have a special area for wireless laptop computers that readers bring with them. Some libraries even have conference rooms for public events. Well, and now let's check if you remember the vocabulary we've learned in the previous video lesson. There will be definitions on the screen, and you have to guess the word. Let's start! A place where you can borrow books to read. It's a library. The next one. A list or a database of books available in the library. This is a catalog. A book with a hardback is also called a hardcover book. And now the last definition. A person who works in a library is called a librarian. Well done! It's great that you remember these words. Now let's teleport to a very typical library and explore it together. On the screen there is a picture of the library plan. Your task is to listen to the librarian's instructions, following them on the plan. Then write down the names of the areas on the plan. If you find the task difficult, you can rewind the video and listen to the instructions twice. Here we go! We are now at the main entrance to the library. There are many different areas. Inside on the left there is an IT center. It has got computers. You can use the internet to work or study here. We have lots of books, videos and journals on different subjects. Books about IT are on the left between the study area and the IT center. English language books are on the bookshelves in front of us. Science books are placed behind mats. The librarian's desk is immediately to the right of the exit, which is also the main entrance. All right, now it's time to check if you have identified the names of the areas correctly. There are bookshelves, an IT center, a study area, a librarian's desk, and finally, an entrance. These are the areas that can be found in most libraries today. Just as we have already mentioned, people abroad really appreciate libraries as a great place for studying and community gatherings. In the materials attached to this lesson, you'll find extra tasks that will help you practice your language skills. You can also go to a local library or your school library and try to describe it using the sample we've just focused on. This will help you improve your language and practice the topic vocabulary and given directions. Now let's check the sentences that may be helpful when you talk about libraries. Pay attention to the word combinations in bold. The books in a library are usually kept on the shelves. The information about library books is stored in the online catalog or in the card catalog. Magazines and newspapers are placed in the periodical section. Periodical section area can be found on your right. Books can be borrowed for two weeks. They can also be read in the library. The word combinations in bold, such as are kept, is stored, are placed, can be found, can be borrowed, and can be read, show us that we are more focused on the action. We do not know or do not care who does the action. This is called the passive voice and we have already learned the basics about it. Now it's time to revise so that we can learn and practice more. Your task is quite simple. 
you should make up sentences in the passive. Let's start with the first one. The documents, usually to print the secretary. The documents are usually printed by the secretary. My car, to wash, right now. My car is being washed right now. The food, not to eat, yesterday. The food wasn't eaten yesterday. The book, cannot, to borrow, today. The book can't be borrowed today. As you understand, if we use the modal verb can in the passive voice, we need to put the verb be after it, and then the past participle of the verb. So we actually say that something can or can't be done. This rule also works with other modal verbs. For example, must be plus past participle, should be plus past participle, has to be plus past participle. Okay, great job! Next time we will practice these structures, so make sure you learn the lesson materials well. I hope this video has been useful and helped you learn more about libraries, English grammar, and the language itself. Thanks for watching! See you next time!